Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. George is back from his glamping trip. Oh, it was glamperous. <laughs> All right. And our guest tonight is Amy Chapman, who is a vocal therapist. We're going to talk about your voice. You got questions? Throw them in the chat room in either Facebook or on YouTube. And Mr. Whittem here is going to be monitoring the chat room. Grab it up. So get those questions in. But we're going to have a great time talking about how to take care of your voice right now on VoiceOver Body Shop. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Whittem, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, Remote Studio Connections for Everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hi there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO BS. Yes. All righty. Well, we're back. We have a live in-studio guest, which we had last week, although you weren't here. Tim was here. Amy Chapman is hi. with us. Amy is a... Uh, well, we have to go over all the letters here. There's a lot of letters. Yeah, it's Amy Chapman, M-A-C-C-S-L-P. She's a vocal therapist and singing and voice specialist. Amy's a licensed, licensed guys, absolutely licensed, <laughs> uh, and board certified speech and language pathologist who has dedicated her career to helping professionals improve and optimize their voice. Uh, as a trained singer and performer, she has combined her expertise on the stage with a scientific knowledge of health and physiology to help her clients achieve optimal results. And your operation is called Voice Lab LA. That's right. Tell us about Voice Lab LA. First, I want to know what all those letters mean. Yeah, maybe okay. that's a good place to MA start. MA Masters. CCC is your Certificate of Clinical Competency. That took me a while because uh, I actually haven't thought of what those letters mean in a long time. <laughs> so this was like a, a good recall moment. I'm really proud of myself for that one. SLP, Speech Language Pathologist. Uh, okay. So uh, Now that we've got the, all that cleared up. <laughs> now that I have that cleared up because I actually police. was nervous. I was nervous I wasn't going to do, uh, do my my, my field justice <laughs> right so all right voice lab la that's the name of your uh, your your practice mm -hmm. tell us about that and, and how you got to that how i got to that so how far do you want me to start like from real early on or the practice birth or my birth just Which, prior conception? what were you doing <laughs> before that and got you into okay. doing that i uh so i worked with a ent a laryngologist and as a speech pathologist and worked in voice, specializing for just people who use their voice professionally. So that's not just singers or voiceover actors, but anybody from a teacher or an attorney or a speaker, a public speaker, public speaker anybody yeah. who mm -hmm. really uses their voice professionally, because everybody has the ability to have a voice disorder who uses their voice a lot. I mean, it can happen to anybody. So that's how I started. Mm -hmm. Very, very medical, very clinical. And then from there, it turned into, well, there's such a gray area. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you could just have a little bit of a husky voice, but you don't have a disorder. It's just right. my voice is a little bit not on today. 
Mm-hmm. And so what can I do about that? Do I necessarily need to see a speech pathologist? Do I need to see my doctor for that? Do I need to go to a vocal coach? Where do I go? And so this was a little bit of a middle ground. Voice Lab LA is a mix of coaching and healthy optimizing as well as rehabbing. So it's a little bit of all of it. Oh, okay. So what are some of the common vocal problems people have? I mean, I know the ones that I have, I, but you know, but what are some of the ones you generally run into on a day-to-day basis? A day-to-day basis, always vocal fatigue because everybody uses their voice too much and that's just what it is. And it's Mm -hmm. not going to stop. So we're just saying, how can I use my voice too much? You know, how can I do more? Right while still being able to do what I need to do. So that's one. Is that too much as in too much volume pushing or too long? Both. Both. It depends on what you're doing, especially voiceover acting. Think of somebody who's narrating a book or doing long form. Okay, you're speaking hours hours and hours and hours. And is it long? No. Sorry, is it loud? No. But is it long? Yes. Mm -hmm. You're sitting here and all the time and you can be at a quiet tone, but it doesn't matter you're speaking for eight hours a day. Right. That's a lot. Or somebody who's doing, let's say, a short video game. And they're yelling a lot. They're screaming. But maybe yeah. it's only for a half an hour. So you get different disorders, different people, different people are using their voice different ways. Right. So it's all over the board, especially now. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people post-quarantine who are a, getting back into something. Mm-hmm. They're starting. Luckily for a lot of voice actors, they're like, I've been doing the entire time like my office was always in my closet so nothing changed for me you know it's mostly the singers who are saying now i'm going back on stage and i need to rehab my voice i need to strengthen back up Mm. a lot of the voice actors are saying "Um, i did the same thing throughout the entire year and a half of this pandemic and nothing much has changed maybe auditioned a little bit more but that's it right yeah of course i i always said that you know if this this disease if if covid19 came out and wiped out mankind that voice actors would rule the world because we're all stuffed in we're our booths all the time. They didn't know. No nope, one, nobody knew. Nobody knew. <laughs> Am I doing a commercial on a vaccine? Let's yeah, yeah. <laughs> get your COVID-19 vaccine today. And we're going through this together. <laughs> but uh, apart. <laughs> yeah, 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 with a big door again. between us. Um, so uh, there's lots of things that can go wrong, but, but why does someone get hoarse? I mean, you know, I'm a little hoarser today than I usually am. Mm. And these are things you have to pay attention to because if you're recording, say something that's long format and then you got to do pickups and your voice doesn't necessarily sound the same. Yeah. What causes that? I mean, oh. what, what exactly is going wrong that someone gets hoarse and it's like, boy, I really sounded like, like crap that morning when I, and people's voices change during the day. So what's actually going on there? So damn. Yeah. Why are you, why are you horse? Why am I horse? Yeah. I don't know. It's just, that's the way it sounds today. I haven't been talking a lot today. What'd you do yesterday? Uh, I did a lot of driving yesterday. Where'd you go? I went to Anaheim Uh and back here and Uh then back to Anaheim and back. Was the air conditioning on blast? Of course it was. Yeah. Did that feel a little dry, a little cold on your throat? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. That could be it. There you go. Okay. So there are different reasons why somebody can get hoarse. Sometimes it has nothing to do with using your voice at all. It could be something as simple as acid reflux from the night before. Mm -hmm. I had too much pizza and wine, which is, you know, a weekly activity in my house. Right. And... (laughs) I woke up saying, mm, I didn't feel so good. And the next morning I was a little husky, probably because some reflux all right. over the night went and visited my vocal cords all, all evening long, causing mm. a little bit of irritation, a little bit of reflux induced laryngitis. Or let's say. They can happen while you're sleeping. They can happen while you're sleeping. This oh, yeah. is all going you are on asleep. And, it's, and yeah. it's just like sometimes you've woken up with heartburn. We've all had mm-hmm. it. It's the same thing. It just creeps up a little higher and it seeps over the esophagus level onto your vocal cords. Mm-hmm. So that's just that acid spilling over. And that's what that is. So uh-huh. that's reflux laryngitis causing reflux hoarseness you could also have allergic laryngitis meaning the allergies dust anything going on california has a lot of california has a lot of dust barometric change mold anything that's going on outside right including maybe some dust in your car when air conditioning is blowing it straight at your face for four hours maybe that Mm. could that could do it 
Right. Okay. So that could do something that causes your vocal cords to be slightly irritated, making you sound a little bit more hoarse. So okay. that's one. Yeah. You we, can, had, we had a dinner party here last night. And, well, that could have done but it But I too. sounded fabulous at that. So. <laughs> kind of well, gosh, it. you know. <laughs> <laughs> it, and usually it's a mix of a lot of different things. So right. when I find most people come in to see me, it's because they've been sick and they have pushed through it. And everybody knows that muscle through it, push through it. That they're like, yeah. it's not there today, but you know what? I'm going to give it my all. Right. And that's when you get in trouble. That's the number one cause. Not technique. Right. That. I would say 99% of the time. Yeah. That's what I hear. Do you find a lot? Let's let's keep to, to voice acting sure. primarily here. I mean, you talk about some of the other things. I know a lot of you know people who begin in voiceover mm -hmm. tend to overproject. Mm -hmm. They forget that they're only talking to one person, sure, and not a thousand no, no, people and this far yeah. away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You don't talk, you know, yeah, half right an inch here. from somebody's eardrum. Uh -huh. uh, so, I, I I take it there. You know, people who start off probably end up getting kind of hoarse because they're not constantly pushing their voice like this. It's like no, just relax and that sort of thing. Do you teach people, you know, in your vocal therapy to perhaps not project as much unless, of course, they're singers? But So it actually just depends on the person. It's so individual. Some right. people, yes, they're loud talkers. They are just loud talkers in general. However, I find that those are not the people that necessarily need to lower their voice because they've been loud talkers their entire life mm -hmm. and they've been fine their entire life. Mm -hmm. And now something's going on. And usually what happens is maybe a doctor or a speech pathologist or somebody says, well, here's the problem. You're screaming at me. Hmm. But they've been screaming their entire life. So yeah. why is it a problem now? Right. So we can, you kind of have to do a little bit of investigative voice journalism in stuff like mm. that where you have to say okay but you're always a screamer now in a case like this if they're doing voiceover they're just screaming too loud right. into a microphone yeah that's going to cause you some difficulty so that's a time that's a little bit more in the voice coaching world to say okay now tone it down a little bit you're talking right. to one person and you've got a really powerful mic right here you don't need, you don't need all that right. right i think for new people too it's like you're talking into this really unnatural uh space like this room is pretty dead as sure. it is, yeah. but when you shrink it into a really small mm -hmm. booth and especially if you're not wearing headphones, your voice is just sort of sucked away. Yeah. So then be, I think it's disorienting. Yeah. So you don't hear people say it that they often. They compensate that way. Yeah. yeah. But I've had like singers that have to go into a voiceover booth, which is so dead. And for them, it's really disorienting. Yeah. It's really uncomfortable. So. It's, I know we're spoke, focusing on voiceover, but like I can see how like being in a weird, an unusual space, you have to readjust your voice to now sure. work in that really small, intimate space. So. Everybody loves a live room, an echoey yeah. room. You yeah. sound good. Think of singing yeah. in the shower. Why do you sound so good? You're in a shower. It's echoing off. And you're like, yeah. I sound amazing. <laughs> yeah. All these formants are floating around in my brain. And I, I, I sound like Pavarotti in the shower. <laughs> so do yeah. I. It's yeah. great. So that's, I mean, my office, which you know we spoke earlier george has given me crap on because it's so live and it's so echoey right. and it's horrible for recording anything yeah. but if you're singing or speaking live in there you just look around and you're like man i sound so good wrong it's space for voiceover that's it that's wrong space to voiceover thank god it's not a voiceover studio well, then, then it probably is great and <laughs> it's fine it's fine yeah it makes our job job trying to find that inner that the goldilocks between being super dead and yeah. clinical sounding yeah. but kind of natural yeah. and yeah so it's that's that's the science of the acoustics part but now to think about it, I, didn't, I just didn't think about how it is, supports the vocal yeah health yeah, too in a totally. weird, an interesting way well yeah. and that's essentially in ears and and headphones is what that does is it allows you to hear yourself so you don't have to push so much because you can hear yourself mm. so i always tell people to have the trick of taking your hands and cupping them and putting them right here just around your ears and then you can hear yourself like you have cans on Hmm. I watched Bill Reiner do it a thousand times tonight. tonight. But, well, you do that and it immediately channels your voice back to your ear. Channels it's all like, right, right it's, it's up surreal, here. Actually. And you yeah. Can, yeah, and you can hear yourself perfectly. So mm -hmm. especially if I'm in a loud place or a dead place and I feel my voice is getting tired, mm -hmm. I just kind of do this just to 
remind myself like you were at a normal level. Right. Doesn't matter what anybody else can hear. Right. What can you hear? Because that's and it's how pretty projecting. discreet. Like I mean, you don't have to call attention. You can just do this, and yeah. it's like wow, that is really effective. You hear that yeah. reflection? Yeah, that's sure. Mm -hmm. um, but as you were saying, some people yell, and they're getting vocal injury. Some people are too quiet, and they're getting vocal injury. And I see that a lot because if you're talking like this all the time, you can hear how unsupported my voice is. Right. It's raspy and it's and just vocal my, fry area. And the vocal fry you're area. All the time. It's bad. And that can be really hard on your vocal cords because mm. you're squeezing. So for some people, I'll say, actually, you should speak a little louder because then you're more supported. You're putting less pressure on your vocal cords themselves, more pressure on your body and the support in general. Yeah. Mm. I forget to warm up a lot. And generally, it's like, you know, if I've got some long copy and I get it, it's it's like, all right, get into it. And I start off, and it sounds fine. And then after a while, it's like, <clears throat> I got you know, to cough a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then it and then it recovers, and mm -hmm. I, yeah, I'm able to go right back into it. But I know there's got to, you know, some mornings it's like, excuse me, I have to go warm up, and it's like me me me, but, you know, and I'll I'll do that for a little bit, but not often. I take it that's something that everybody should do before they start doing their voiceover work. So listen. Okay, I'm listening. Okay, that's why okay. you're here. That's why I'm here. I'm not here to tell everybody what to do because some people say, you know what? I like to gargle with a cup of milk and coffee and I am good to go. One shot of tequila later and my voice has never been better. And I'm not here to say, well, you better stop that and do my warm up. Right. Because everybody's different. What are you doing in your recordings, does it require a lot of warm up, or is it so similar to your day to day voice that it's actually just a little bit more of what you're already doing? Right, mm -hmm. that's what I normally sound like. So yeah. then, if that's normally what you sound like, right. it's probably not that big of a deal for you to get up and me me me. You know, you don't necessarily have to. Now, if somebody's doing so much more, if they're doing animated, if they're doing right. little characters and they have to do all this crazy stuff that they're not used to doing, right. mm -hmm. that's somebody who I would say, you got to do a little bit more warm up because you're doing more acrobatics with your voice. Right. If I'm walking down the street and I'm just walking, I'm not going to stretch before I do that. Okay. If you're just joining us, you've missed a lot already. Our <laughs> guest is Amy Chapman. We're talking about vocal therapy. She is a licensed vocal therapist she's actually got a california license I do, I do. and we all know how hard those are to get uh so if you've got a question for her, throw it in the chat room in facebook or on youtube and jorge here is going to uh write those down so we can ask you those questions from our massive audience across the fruited plain and around got a couple here. in already outstanding yep. all right um now, you train people for proper vocal hygiene. Now, what do you mean by vocal hygiene? I mean, I, mean, I, I tend to not care about my voice because it just works most of the time. Uh, but what, what to you is good vocal hygiene? So the second somebody goes from being the very famous Dan Leonard, and my voice just works. It's always worked. I've yeah. never had to think about it. And right. then all of a sudden, boom, you got to think about it. Something mm. happens and you say, uh, it's not working the same way it used to. Right. Amy, help. <laughs> and that's when we go into vocal hygiene. What's ah. going on with your voice? So there are the specific vocal hygienes that everybody knows of. Drink water, stay healthy. What I'll else? Pizza Warm up, eat a... pizza and wine. and <laughs> all, all those things <laughs> what, I don't do. What, what is this? Yeah. What are we gargling with? Oh, alcohol. alcohol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Nasal yeah. rinse. Sure. There's those things. And that's the hygiene part. And that's that's the stuff you find on Google. I think you could look at my wiki how I where I talk about all that stuff. And that's the easy stuff you can look it up. The vocal hygiene that I more talk about is very personal for each person. Each person sounds different. Each person mm. needs something different. Each person is very individual in how their voice works and how it needs to be working and what they're doing that's incorrect. And if they're doing something incorrectly that they have to do for their job, like a weird animated voice that's like this, that you shouldn't be doing all the time, what, what? should we do mm -hmm. to counteract that? So it's one of these things. It's a balance. It's a yin and yang. It's, it's you got to take that pressure and release it somehow. 
if you're doing narration all day long, what are we going to do on the other hours when you're not? Right. What is it? How is it causing a problem? And there are some people who there is no problem whatsoever. And these are probably the people who are not going to be watching this episode. Oh, no, they're, they're watching. They're like, hmm, there's, there's going to be something new there's here gonna... that I didn't think about. Yeah. But there's yeah. so many people who they're fine. And it's what, you know, everybody says, I want to be like that person who has vocal cords of steel. What's wrong with Like, why can't I have that? And my phrase that I tell so many people is God just loves them a little bit more. And I don't know why. <laughs> like, it's just it. That's what they they were given that. And you're not for whatever reason. So let's work on it. So right. that's that's essentially my hygiene. Oh, OK. Well, because we're all unique. We're all snowflakes as far as that's our voices right. are concerned. That's right. That's what's important about voiceover and why, you know, you have to explore well, what's unique about me. What's unique about my voice? You know, that sort of thing. Yeah. People are like, you know, they just audition and sound like everybody else on every audition. Not at all. It's and... a, a vocal fingerprint. Mm -hmm. All righty. Mm -hmm. Again, you got a question. Now's the time. There's some funny in. comments like John Carlson mentioned. After ripping out an old carpet from the previous owners, I was able to do an awesome Christopher Walken. Yeah, see? <laughs> the yeah. dog and cigarette dust did wonders <laughs> for a week. So That's the last absolutely. thing you want to do is like rely on some extremely healthy situation to get a voice and then cast the gig that well yeah that yeah, would yeah. be really bad well that it's so common that people say i loved my voice my when, post covid voice you know yeah. where it was tired and gravelly and it right. sounded really good you know but it's always walking a, a really thin line between yeah. can i keep this and then you just whoop, flip on over into real injury land right. and it's very difficult to stay on the non-injury side when you sound like that so right. Christopher Walken. <laughs> that's a good one for a couple of record a couple of times and then move it on and don't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the way that is. Yeah. <laughs> when you hear when you hear somebody else, uh, Jim McNicholas mentioned Tony Robbins. When you can you hear that voice in your head? Oh, yes. I, I have Tony Robbins what, stuck in my head. What does it make you think when you ago. hear his voice like cavernous? And yeah. and but also like is that damage that's been done to his voice irreversible? Like that will be with him the rest of his life. Well, he has such a distinct, very he's a distinct. He also has voice. a distinct look and face and size. I mean, he's yeah, yeah. huge. He's, big, big tall guy. he's huge, but like think of the size of his throat. I yeah. mean, that's a cave in there. His vocal cords are probably the size yeah. of my hands. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like right. it's so different. I like. By the way, I would love to see what's going on in those vocal cords but it, he might have something on his vocal cords themselves but it's it's not an issue for him it's not a problem with him it's not, not it seems to be whatever it is is consistent and he's like every okay. time i hear him yeah. year after year on whatever yeah. Right. it's yeah. like that's tony robbins that's yeah. his voice I, it's I, consistent yeah i studied with tony like 35 years ago mm. and uh he was much younger then and now i listen to him i'm like you know his voice sounds older but he, all he does is he's, he's a public speaker yeah, and talks to these huge audiences and stuff. So, you know, it hasn't, it hasn't diminished his ability to communicate when sure. he communicates at all. For, yeah. I hope not. I mean, that's the thing is like whatever damage, whatever his vocal, whatever's going on in there, is it something that will just maintain for years and years and years at that level, you know, probably. Yeah. yeah. Probably. Did, did you see, uh, obviously people who had COVID, did they have to come to you after they recovered? And yeah. what type of what type of things did you find with that? Some people had, I mean, there's a lot of lung issues. So mm -hmm. if you have lung issues and your breathing is labored, your voice is going to be labored because that's the gas to your voice. Right. So if you're having that difficulty, so it's doing a lot of lung exercises, also fatigue, your complete body. A lot of people still have those long symptoms of fatigue. Mm -hmm. So then you can still feel extra fatigued after. And how are you going to get a nice loud sounding voice if you yourself are so tired? Mm -hmm. So it's strengthening, it's conditioning, it's learning to breathe and support and do everything you need to do for your voice. That's like some true rehab versus technique and placement, things like that. Right. So it's, it's working those types of muscles. Good. I Thankfully, I haven't seen too much. Good. <laughs> I haven't seen too much, but there's been there's been some people who say I I don't have my falsetto or I can't hit hit this voice or I can't squeeze the same way I used to, mm. and so it's just working it back into it. Very good. Mm. Uh, one of the things you do you talk about is vocal massage. Mm -hmm. Explain. <laughs> <laughs> so these muscles are so important with vocalizing. Right. Your throat muscles 
help to support and squeeze and release and do everything. And if you're, and I, I go back to, I'm not a voice actor, but I have to make lots of voices and I'm staring at Debbie Derryberry's picture right there. That yeah, she does, a, few <laughs> she them, does yeah. a couple of them and I'm channeling her right there. <laughs> and if you're squeezing right here and everything's squeezing so much, your voice wants to keep that muscular moment right there. And then let's say you have your next job, which is a low commercial. Suddenly you're Kathleen Turner. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. That's <laughs> You're doing something else. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Maybe not as PG rated, right. but whatever it is, it's more released, but you can't release it because you're so high up. So what the manipulation does, and I'm just giving one example for what that is, the voice massage, mm -hmm. it releases these muscles. So then it allows these muscles to relax. It allows your larynx to lower. It allows it to go higher and lower and move about. And so you have much more agility in your voice. What does that, what does the massage involve? Well, it, um, it involves massaging. Oh, okay. <laughs> I would hope. I mean, and massaging. Physical. Yeah, that's right. I, I wave a wand. <laughs> I sprinkle some magic voice dust. So I massage muscles and I start doing a manipulation on your actual larynx. So mm -hmm. moving the muscles in a different way. So it's not just a massage, but it's a manipulation of the muscles, this myofascial release, it's tongue, it's jaw, it's throat, it's upper shoulders, it's chest. So it's oh. everything in this whole area because this is all really affected by the voice. Oh, right. So not necessarily, I'm not giving back massages. <laughs> no, okay. Get your feet yeah. away from me. Keep your shoes on. Yeah. I don't want it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I would think that you know every each one of these muscles affects your voice in some right. way. You know, they, right. you know, you, you, you know, your jaw muscles are you know if they're tense, that's, that's going to it. change the way you do yeah. things. Yeah. Or if your shoulder muscles yeah. or your neck muscles, uh -huh. you're turning your head a certain way. It's that's it. It's going to strain your vocal cords sure. one way or another. Totally. So if those are nice and relaxed, yeah. You know, yeah. Now, is that something you do like someone? you know, before a performance or all just, the time, yeah. all the time. Um, I had one, one voiceover, uh, actor who would come to me a lot and she always, she was cast as the baby for everything. So oh. it's something like, oh, like yeah, that's yeah, not, yeah. That constant, mm -hmm. but then she would also do, she wanted more lower things and she couldn't get lower mm -hmm. unless she came to me for a manipulation. So she would do uh -huh. the manipulation and turned her into Kathleen Turner right away. Just said, oh, and then it just lowered it all. So, yes, some people do it before a show, some before a big record, some people, you know, before you know, a lot of singers come as well for right. that. Right. But I've had a big number of voiceover actors who come for that. Once again, we're talking with Amy Chapman, vocal therapist. Vocal massage, masseuse. Masseuse. <laughs> but you've never been told, that, asked, uh, described as that before. Another thing that you deal with is aging voices. We were just mm. talking about Tony Robbins, who's mm. older than he, mm. you know, he was a kid when I met him. Sure. But he's like, you know, much older than that now. Um, but what happens to the voice as you get older? I mean, if I listen to my tapes from 1978, I don't sound anything like this. Well, do you look anything like that? Dude? Not, no, not there even we go. I had so, hair then, too. So, <laughs> so elasticity in our skin also exists in our vocal cords, in our tissues. Huh. So we lose elasticity as we get older. Right. Correct. So we're losing elasticity, not just in our skin, in our vocal cords. So they become less pliable. They become stiffer. As men get older, their voice gets higher. As women get older, our voice gets lower. Very interesting, right? You mm. lose testosterone, we lose estrogen. Mm. So we all kind of even out to be gender neutral in the <laughs> end. <laughs> We're all mm. sort of the same. No, but so different things happen, especially there can be something called presbyolaryngeus, which is called aging larynx, presbyolaryngeus. Mm. Right. And it's a weakness, as in the rest of our body it gets a little weaker as we get older. Again, less pliability, less collagen, mm. less elasticity. And we need to work harder. So a lot of the things I do for aging voice is strengthening exercises. Like? Like bringing your vocal cords together. And I don't want to say that I'm making somebody yell because I know that somebody's going to be, oh, Amy just told me to yell. But right. if I want to bring my vocal cords together, I want a pure tone. Ah, uh, you can hear the tinny quality to it. You can hear my vocal cords coming. You don't hear any breathiness. 
ah, that's a breathier mm. quality. Right. And that is not going to be as strengthening as a pure sound, ah, uh, getting my vocal cords to come all the way together. Ah. Uh, Give it a little more oomph. Ah. Uh, yeah. So you heard there was less breath, but you're starting from a hoarse place today. A little bit. So for you, I would not have you do that because. Oh, great. What that means. So I'm, stop. We're That's right. done for the day. Thank you. You're done. I just ruined your career. <laughs> so what I actually would do for you is say, let's rest your voice. Let's make sure that your vocal cords are clean and healthy and feeling fine before we start. Because if you already have a little bit of huskiness today, right. that means you have a little bit of irregularity on your vocal cord level. So they're a little bit swollen. So mm -hmm. if I'm squeezing them together to give you that pure sound, uh, and they're already a little swollen, that's when we get into muscling through it, push it through territory, mm. disorder territory. <sighs> so I'm not going to have you do that. So don't do that anymore. I'm, you're done. You're done. I'm that's deaf. it. George, you're the only one I can talk <laughs> take to. Over. The take over. Take over, George. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take over. It'll be the Amy show now. <laughs> We're talking with Amy Chapman. We're going to try and fix our voices. Um, Breathing exercises. Mm. Um, I find people just don't know how to breathe. Singers know how to breathe. Singers who get into voiceover have a distinct advantage because mm. they understand that you should be able to do a sentence or two without taking a breath. Breath support, breath control. Right. It's all part of singing and training. Yeah. Well, training and singing. Yeah. And singing and training. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> What what are some breathing exercises that would always be beneficial to people so they they can read two sentences at a time without taking a breath? So um, let's talk a little bit about breath first and okay. the D word, which is my least favorite word. Which is? Diaphragm. Thank you. Oh, I, oh. Is that right? I hate that damn word. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because anybody who says breathe from your diaphragm, oh, do it. What does that mean? Exactly. I don't okay. do that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Because we don't know where it is. We're like somewhere in here, yeah. somewhere, but breathe yeah. from it. And you're like, I can't. I actually, I think I'm doing it. Maybe I'm, I don't know. So it yes. sort of does its own thing on its own. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Except for I've heard, and even today I heard somebody who said, well, I actually have a good technique. I breathe from my diaphragm. And I, on Zoom, you could still see my <laughs> eyes roll behind my head saying, ugh, again with this? So yes, our diaphragm does play a huge role in our breathing. However, we don't control it. It's involuntary. What we can control is the muscles surrounding the diaphragm. And that's where we need to focus. So I don't put too much pressure on breathing for every single person. I wait to see if it's an issue mm -hmm. because sometimes mm -hmm. you're focused on breathing so much that you can't do anything else. And then you're just breathing. And you have a weird voice because you're working on your breathing yeah. and, and it's going to do more harm than good. Especially if you say, let's work on breathing. You've never had a breathing issue. I said, right. why? why, why are we going to work on it? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. So for you, I wouldn't for some people who are having breathing things, I'll call them as opposed to issues or difficulties or yeah. disorders. It's a very individual. Why are you having this? What's going on? You want to go a little deeper. Has it always been happening? Did you break a rib? Are you not doing any cardio? Are you not doing, no. you know, things like that. So you really want to see what's going on with your voice. Yeah. Cardio, great. Yeah. Always good for your voice. Always good for voiceover actors. Anybody who's recording, I will say do some cardio in the morning. Mm. Even midday. Mm. If your voice gets tired and you're saying, I just don't feel it right now. Do a little bit cardio. Get out of breath because what that's going to mm. do is get your lungs moving. Yes, your diaphragm will be moving too. Again, you're not doing anything to it, right. but it'll get your lungs moving. It'll get everything becoming stronger and cleaner and clearer. And then after that, your lungs will move. They'll, they'll be just much, much more stretched out, ah. much more open, much more pliable. And you'll be able to use your voice a lot better. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean... You know, I, I find it is generally people who are starting in voiceover who are older, who have a lot of trouble with that. Mm. that they're constantly breathing. I mean, George and I get audio from people all the time. So what does my samples. studio sound like? Yeah, yeah they're just like, their raw audio sample. You yeah. hear how often they have to in, 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 inject a breath into a phrase, sometimes halfway through a phrase. Yep. And now they have to edit all that out. And mm -hmm. so it's a lot more work for them. So, right. so mm -hmm. if they can learn how to breathe, that will help. 
or not breathe. Or, or, <laughs> or, or yeah, or at least plan where your breaths are supposed to be in a That's particular right. piece of That's coffee. Right. That's right. Um, you know, so I actually have an elliptical in my office that I have a lot of my voice professionals jump on mm -hmm. and do whatever they need to do while completely out of breath. And once <laughs> they can get that done, oh, they're saying to be or not to be, that is the question, whatever it is. Right. Nobody's doing to be or not to be in my, <laughs> in my studio. It's just the first thing that came to my, my big old head. But once they can do that and they stop and they catch their breath and then they go on and start doing it, it comes out so much easier. They have no problem. Mm. All righty. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Too. All right. We're going to take a break right now. If you got a question for Amy, throw it in the chat room right now and we'll get to those questions in just a minute. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after these messages. Don't go away. Oh, I think I heard the voice of a body shop. I did. I did hear the voice of a body shop. Beetle body shop. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Look what you made me do. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. <laughs> Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. From voiceoveressentials.com, it's the relationship savior, the multicolor LED VO recording sign. Not just a stock on the air or recording sign. It's our exclusive voiceover recording sign. This brilliantly lit LED 20 color beacon tells everybody at home, which is currently everybody, hey, I'm auditioning, recording, podcasting, narrating, or broadcasting here, and a few moments of relative quiet would be very much appreciated. What's more, the wafer-thin remote control lets you choose a multitude of options, from color to brightness, flashing to fade in and out. You can even set up your own personal codes. Red means I'm recording, blue, playing back, green, it's a wrap. Plug in the seven foot long cord and hang it on a doorknob or wall hook using the included chain. For voice workers, silence really is golden. And gold is one of the 20 colors you can choose from. Order yours now for just $69.95 from voiceoveressentials.com. That's voiceoveressentials.com. Well, hey there, Hero. It's David H. Lawrence, the 17th of VOHeroes.com. And this past week, we opened registration for the brand new updated VO Heroes Pro 2021 program, and we closed registration. No more registration. Everybody's got to wait until next year, except for one group of people. And it may be you. If you went to the registration page and you thought, oh, I'd love to do this, but I can't come up with all the money at once. Okay, we, we've created a payment plan for you. A four-month payment plan. You start right now. You get right into class. You get everything that everybody got that registered during the week, the equipment, the, the courses, the support, the discussion group, the workouts every month, the accountability, everything, just by simply going to voheroes.com slash 4PMT. You go there, the payment plan is yours, and I would love to hold your hand and help you build a successful and satisfying and profitable voiceover career. voheroes.com slash 4PMT, and we will see you in class. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The VoiceOver Body Shop. And we're back with Amy Chapman talking about taking care of your voice. And I'm sure lots of you have questions. We got room in the chat room for you to ask your questions, so get them in there. George, you get to ask the first question. Well, the first one that came in was from Jim McNicholas, one of our regular viewers. Thanks, Jim. Um, 
how much daily exercise would Amy recommend for vocal exercises to build up strength in your vocal cords? Because when I was in radio, I did six hours a day, and now it's only two hours maximum. So I'm a little unclear. So if he was doing six hours a day before, and now he's doing two hours maximum, is there something he needs to do? What would you do to build up strength? If oh, I guess he's trying to say he wants to get back to those days where he did six hours a day. I'm I not don't. sure about the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, well yeah. six hours a lot, but if you're yeah. doing, I wouldn't say do six hours of strength training. That's a lot. Right, but right. if you're working as a radio host for six hours a day, yeah. um, and now you're at two hours a day and you want to go back up, I do suggest when it's somebody wants to do some strength training to not do all six hours at once, all four hours at once, all one hour at once. I break it up 15 minutes, 15 minutes, an hour, 15 minutes, an hour, 15 minutes, an hour. That I find is a lot more sustainable for your voice right. to do small increments. And then you're not worn out because the whole risk of doing way too much is you get swollen right. and then you're pushing on top of it and you're working through it and then you wind up in a worse position. So you really want to take it easy. Your vocal cords are really delicate. They're really small, mm. tiny bits at a time, but still strengthening right. 15 minutes, an hour, I would say. What, what do you do to strengthen your voice? So like I was saying before, bringing your vocal cords together. Mm -hmm. So that means anything in a pure tone that's easy for you to create. So mm -hmm. nothing that's, uh, nothing that's pushing too hard, just a nice, pure, mm, uh, nice, clean sound, depending on where your voice sits. If you're uh, a higher voice, a lower voice, I want you also to stretch and strengthen all parts of your voice. So it's not just one part of your voice. It's not just your bass. It's not just your falsetto. You really want a well-balanced voice. So that's big for, for me for strengthening as well. Right. Is it important to find the center of your voice, like the whatever the natural pitch is of your voice? Mm -hmm. So they call them optimal pitch. Or optimal pitch. Yes. Yeah. And word. so okay. usually, so if I say, if I ask you a question, I want you to answer with, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. so is your name Dan? Yes. That's not the question. I said to answer with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it. There you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm, is your optimum pitch. So I want you to mm -hmm, and hold it. And now open. Ah, uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So that's your that's your natural optimal pitch. One, mm -hmm. two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. You try mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so do the first the one, second, not not the second, because the, the second one usually goes up too high. Oh, I mm -hmm. see. So you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's like my most. Yep. Like so that's optimal your pitch. optimal pitch. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't make a voice actor out of you yet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I can voice. I just can't act. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the problem. So that's that other part. <laughs> um, There's another one. This one came from another one of our regs, J. Horace Black. Um, what do you feel? Uh, Oh, what's your feeling on the metal singing straw? You might know something about this. I do. Um, is this a beneficial way for warming up and keeping the voice healthy? Yeah, I have. Mm, am I allowed to toss out affiliates on oh, here? Yeah, go sure. For it. Sure. Because shameless promotion is what keeps us going. <laughs> here. Pays the bills. Uh, right. Uh, so I work a lot with a singing straw company called The Singing Straw. Easy enough. And I have a 15% off or 10% whatever it is, affiliate code, Voice Lab LA. And I do like, I like the professional one. So there's different kinds. The professional one is different sizes. Hmm. And the smallest straw is actually my favorite. What I like about it, and I like all my singers and voice actors to do this as well. When you push so much air through these tiny little straws, you get a back pressure of air. And it goes down on your vocal cords and then you bring together. So it's a really good strengthening exercise. Let's go back to the aging voice. It's mm -hmm. good for that. It's also good for relieving stress and tension. Mm -hmm. So when you have vocal cord stress and everything's squeezing too tight, this helps blow everything out and relieve that stress. How does, how does it work? So it's a straw. Okay. That's I, it. I got that. <laughs> so when you, <laughs> when you push so much air 
through that straw right. and you're really working it, you get a back pressure of that air. So that air now goes down towards your vocal cords. Your vocal cords have air coming from your lungs up. So now your vocal cords are balancing air coming up from down, down from up. Mm. So you're strengthening your vocal cords on different levels. Ah. So you can hum at the same time as you're blowing air. It's, it's called a semi-occluded vocal tract exercise. The same thing happens when you're doing a lip trill. You get that same pushback of air. Hmm. Same thing happens if you're. There's different ways to do it. That would explain like when I, I I haven't played in a while, but I used to be a trumpet player, and like so you're forcing a tremendous amount yep. of air pressure yep. through very very tightly squeezed lips, yep. and you can. They did it all the time in band class. Like, yeah. let's see who can play the longest notes, you uh -huh. know? And it was so not fair because the trumpet players could do it the longest yeah. every time because yeah. we were constricting the yep. airflow the most. Yeah. The woodwind players had no chance because no. they're just they're just blowing. Yeah. But the trumpet players, we could go for a minute or even longer just holding sure. a note because, yeah, all that back pressure, you know? A lot of horn players have very good voices, I found. And I think it's because of that. So like Chet Baker, he was as much known for singing as playing trumpet. Yeah. Oh, I have yeah. another client, Aubrey Logan, who is amazing. She plays a trombone and she, oh, cool. and then she starts singing jazz and oh, it's yeah. out of control. I mean, That's check her cool. out. She's so talented, <laughs> but it's so incredible back and forth and back and forth. And I think that motion, which is the same thing as the singing straw mm. helps with your vocal cords mm. and helps with the strength of your vocal cords. Mm. So there's been a lot of studies, a lot of science, there's a lot of hubbub around mm. all of it as well. Useful this time of year during the Jewish high holidays when people are blowing shofars. That's and... right. <laughs> so it's, Trust it's, me, I was at Rosh Hashanah yeah. services last yeah. week and mm. I saw them, which they tied a little mask on the, on the end of it. <laughs> <Really? laughs> yes. Well, last year, I mean, like brass groups were putting like a little, uh, it's hard to describe it. It was just like a thing they'd slip over the bell of the instrument yeah. to catch whatever might fly out of the oh, bell. Yeah, what like a hairnet? Like what are they doing? I mean, like, like that. Yeah, you just like sort of like tie it up. Yeah. Yeah, they I, were doing I didn't that. See that, but big long ram's horn. It's yeah, not, it's not coming up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but everyone's like, at one, two. Three. Three, How long yeah. can they hold the, you know, sure. the, the gondola on that one? Anyway, <laughs> again, if you got a question about vocal health with Amy Chapman. Again, we got some room in the chat room for it, and uh, we would love to answer those questions for you. I bet you she'd like to answer them, too. I'd love to. What do we got next? There's George? one more in here from John Carlson. Um, and he says, I wasn't sure if this was mentioned because I was putting the kids to bed, but I feel like my voice is, an, is different in the morning before breakfast as opposed to after breakfast. Is it in my head? <laughs> Probably not. No. <laughs> no, no, not at all. So you wake up, you're so relaxed. And John, I also have kids that I have to put to get <laughs> the second you wake up. <clears throat> and now you're on dad duty or mom duty or parent duty. And you're no longer relaxed from waking up and the day starts and you drink your coffee and you're all tense and your voice gets tense. That is so very common. You know, mm -hmm. if you ask me to sing a note in the morning, I am Kathleen Turner and oh, everything's so low. But the second you get tense, I can't hit those low notes anymore. So absolutely, your voice can change from right after you eat, right after you have some coffee. Coffee, yeah. Coffee. Ampia, uh, Ampiana, can't do it without it. Right. And um, even eating, you're swallowing, you're using essentially your vocal cord muscles are swallowing muscles. Mm -hmm. So once you start eating, start that body moving it's going to change your voice not always in a bad way and hmm. you can always manipulate it however you need to but yeah it absolutely can change yeah i was just assuming it was literally something that he's eating or whatever i mean that's a contributing factor i guess but it's not probably not at not the not moment the okay. unless you have a ton of mucus from something some people get a lot of mucus from dairy or yogurt yeah. and you get very viscousy in your throat clearing that's something that can affect it mm -hmm. or you typically wouldn't have instant reflux. It doesn't happen right away where you eat something and right. all of a sudden you're feeling the reflux. Um, you typically wouldn't have instant drying effects from any sort of caffeine. So the only thing would really be maybe the mucus, but probably not something having to do with what he's really more just like your state of mind or yeah. Your energy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Muscle tension, energy. I know I've had voice actors tell me like, I can only do this one kind of job 
first thing first in the thing morning. morning. Yeah. yeah. Or like they get up extra early. Yeah, because they're so tired. And when you're so tired, you have nothing, nothing supporting. So you're able to get a lot lower. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I've never found that to be a problem. Because sometimes I do a lot of work with companies in Europe. Mm. And they're like, well, can you get up at like 630? Because that's when we got to do the session. Yeah, sure. Fine. Get up. All right, but I get in the booth and it's back to my normal voice. Mm. Real do you quickly. do anything? Do you do you have, do you still do the same like morning routine when you get up that early? Do you just shift it earlier, or do you like? I just get up earlier and eat or anything. You know, you still hit the coffee machine and yeah, you know it's like I'm not going anywhere until you know I get my caffeine. Sure, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think that affects my voice very much. Uh, is caffeine is is caffeine a yay nay or a neutral thing when it comes to the voice? So for me, it's a yay. Mm -hmm. And I will always say it's a yay. Don't drink coffee all day long. But mm -hmm. if you have one or two cups, I'm fine with that. The only thing with coffee is, one, the reflux. It can be a reflux trigger is caffeine. Mm -hmm. And it's slightly dehydrating. But as long as you're drinking water with it, I drink water before I have my coffee and I drink water after. And I don't feel any dehydrating effects from the coffee. So good news. Drink your coffee if you want to. Mm. What kind of stuff is really bad for your voice? Like I, I hear... Don't eat Mexican food before you do a session. So it's, uh, it's different for everybody. Some people can have honestly anything. Like I can have dairy all day long and I mm. get no mucus. Mm. Some people have one teeny tiny bite of cheese and that's it. They're done. Mm. So it's really what for you is going to cause it. Mm. I, again, also with the reflux trigger. Some people get it. Some people don't. It's very commonly overdiagnosed. That is uh, very common. Mm -hmm. And so it really just depends on you and your own personal voice. Um, I don't think that there is one thing that you just should not have. Maybe gargle with bleach. That's the one thing I'll say. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Other than that. It's supposed to get rid of COVID. Uh, you know, that? yeah, that's right. <laughs> anyway, um, how can people get a hold of you if they, they want some uh, some assistance with their, their vocal technique and, you know. And also, how much can you do far from afar versus Yeah, I was going to say, what can you do on Zoom? Or... So I've been doing yeah. a lot of Zoom, and if there's something that I can't do on Zoom, I will tell people, because it that's, that's well, not mas fun. The energy or massages. Are so I, very hard to do. it yeah. is very hard, but sometimes, <laughs> grab you know, I grab you, yeah, yeah. strangle. I could stick my hand <laughs> to the computer and grab it and bring it in. Plenty of people uh, I want to that's right. Too. But yeah. I have been teaching people how to do some self manipulation stuff for whatever they're dealing with. Right. So there are different ways that I can help through that. But um, uh, through my website, voicelabla.com, through my Instagram, mm -hmm. it's just Amy Chapman. Uh, don't call me. I'm really bad at picking up. <laughs> I'm really bad at calling people back. I should even take off my phone number. I just haven't done that yet because people find it no matter what. Um, but email me. Email me. <laughs> email me. Go to my website. That's the best way. Very good. All righty. Well, thanks for being with us. Yeah. Great to have you back on our having. show. I know. When Fun was the last time? What flesh. was it? Oh. Five years ago? Yeah, it was Probably a while. when we first came out to California. Yeah. yeah. I think we were here, but you weren't you weren't physically here. I so. wasn't physically yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. I was zooming in before it was cool to zoom. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Have I well, that? we've been yeah. doing zooming in long before it was cool to zoom. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so was I. People used to give me so much crap for making them download Zoom. Oh. Ugh. Yeah. And they were like, oh, I have to download this new application. I'm like, it's not that bad. It's just it'll be the wave of our pandemic future. Just <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wish I would have invested right. In the Wish I would have. Oh, God. Why didn't I and see that sold right as, as things started to go south? Anyway, anyway thanks for being with us. Thank thanks you. For thanks for Great having to see me. you again. All righty. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and George and I are going to re rack it for Tech Talk and get ready to wrap this one up. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. 
Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources, like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. This is the part of the show where we get to talk about source elements, the creators of Source Connect, and a lot of other tools that allow engineers to work remotely with voice actors, uh, musicians, anybody that wants to collaborate with audio all around the world. And it has really become a mainstream tool, a very mainstream tool in the use, uh, in, in commercial production, uh, production for film, post, etc. Why? Because for one thing, they've been doing it a long time, 15 plus years just in perfecting and improving Source Connect alone. And then the fact that in the studio, the side that you're not in, the one, the one that you're connecting to, it's plugged directly in, integrated into their Pro Tools production workflow. So they love that. They love that your audio goes straight into a track. And actors love it because when the session's over, it's over. You don't have to do any editing. You don't have to do any post. So during that session, your microphone is like on a virtual mic cable that goes from your studio all the way to that studio, halfway across the world, wherever it happens to be. Anyway, get signed up. Go to source-elements.com and get a 15-day free trial just so you can get it up and running and become familiar with it. If you're really feeling overwhelmed, head over to my site. I've got a page on there all about Source Connect with some videos and some help info to help get you up and running. And we can also do a little one-on-one -on -one to get you up to speed a little bit faster. Anyway, thanks, Source Elements. Let's get back to the show and answer some tech questions. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. All right. I suppose we could like move that camera and make a two shot out of it. <laughs> should, we, should we do a camera move? There we go. With our fluid head tripod? Is that a fluid head tripod? There you go. <laughs> we'll, we'll push it in for tech check. Okay. <laughs> that's cool. All righty. Well. Uh, that was great having her in. I, it always is good having her here. Yeah. Uh, you know, having we, anybody here. Really. Well, yeah, yeah, really. It's like. <laughs> I mean, it's so it's still weird. It's still weird getting used to having people physically I know, here. A year and a half. we were Let like, alone me being here. Yeah. Hope, <laughs> hope, praying that the internet would work so we could all be in the same place at the yeah. same time. Anyway. Uh, next week on this very show, which we're about to do now, if you want to watch it live, mm -hmm. uh, Tech Talk, we think 63. <laughs> and we Is lost anybody, track somewhere along the, the line. Can you, uh, we'll, we'll go back and take a look and see what's going on. And then on September 27, for that entire week, we have voiceover legal eagle Rob Siglimpaglia will be joining us, uh, author of VO Legal. Uh, and so there's lots of interesting questions about legalities and contracts and stuff like that. Rob knows that stuff inside out, backwards and upside down and explains That's it right. really well. So we'll, uh, we'll be talking with him. I don't, I'm not sure if he's going to be out here in LA or if he's going to be back in New Jersey or whatever, but he'll be here one way or another. Who are our donors of the week? Our donors. And there's a long list of them. Maybe we can alternate them this time. Let's do it. Okay. It's easier Go since for we're it. here together. So I'll start with Rob Ryder. Uh, Patty Gibbons. Antland Productions. That's Uncle Roy, by the way. Yeah. Uh, Michelle Blanker. Hi, Michelle. Christopher Epperson. Sandra Manwiller. Oh, that's a new name. Yeah, well, uh, sort of new. New to me. Okay. Philip Sapir. Uh, Trey Mosley. Shelly Avellino. Thomas Pinto. Oh, he's a name that goes way back. Greg yeah. Thomas. Shayna Pentington Baird. Martha Kahn. Martha. Uh, you know, Yes, I Kahn Productions. That's right. If you want your kids to learn how to do voiceover, Martha's the person to do it. Uh, Don Griffith. Stephen Chandler. Robert Liedem. Michael Kearns. And Graham Spicer up there in hey. the Great White North, eh? All righty. Good to hear his name. Yeah. You can still join our mailing list, by the way. If you go to our website, if you can go to our website, it says join our mailing list. Uh, do that so we can send you what we're doing and who's coming on and, mm -hmm. and those sorts of things. Uh, I have a personal thing. Well, business well, personal. Please. Um, my longtime assistant and friend, Rebel Claire, is retiring from being my assistant slash customer service person. Ah. So 
if you if you or anybody you know would like to do that kind of a role and i'm gonna you're gonna have to learn a lot of stuff he'll put you to work and i'm gonna keep you pretty busy but if that sounds interesting to you maybe you want to supplement your time as a voice actor maybe you're not working as much as you thought you would whatever hit me up send me an email at uh, send an email to george at george the and uh let me know send me a resume i'm reaching out far and wide to find a replacement and it ain't easy because rubble is an amazing person but uh looking to find someone soon. So let Excellent. me know. All right. We need to thank our sponsors as well, like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And JMC Demos. Uh, George did all the chat room stuff tonight. Wasn't that bad? No. I was, was a little was. distracted sometimes. That's the only problem with doing that job at the same time. I right. don't get to fully focus on it. No, you were I doing guess, great. But you, it was, you were uh, fine. You were fine. Thank don't worry you. About it. I don't mind. All right. Uh, let's see. Sue Merlino. We're all together again here in the in the in the big studio. So Sue, great to have you back in here. Yeah, look. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -oh, there we go. Yeah. No, you got no, to <laughs> change the camera to show her show that she's actually there. No, uh, she's not going to do it. Never she's mind. not going to do it. All right. Oh, wrong camera. Okay. Yeah, it was the wrong camera. <laughs> okay. There she is. All right. Yay. Look at her. She's all dressed from work. She looks nice. Yeah. Put her on camera. Yeah. Anyway, um, thanks to her for getting it done tonight because it was flawless. Absolutely flawless. All right. I'll watch I'll watch it later. We're gonna we'll, re-edit it later. Yeah, There's one thing we gotta fix. Fix it in post. Yeah. And of course, the one and only Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Well, we're gonna re-rack it for tech talk. Stick around if you got questions for us about your home voiceover studio. Now's a good time to ask them. You can throw them in the chat room and all these places that we tell you to throw them. So do that right now. In the meantime, we're here to help you out with your home studios and with all sorts of great information for your voiceover career. So be with us every week. Not a problem. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. See you in a bit.